guys, welcome to my channel, Keeping Up With ENA. I'm Eliza, and in today's video, we're gonna do like a sit down chit chat. I just got my canes, and I'm gonna give you guys a little story time of my backstory of what happened. I don't know if most of you know, but if you follow my channel, you may know that I was recently diagnosed with melanoma stage three. And if you wanna hear about my journey, go ahead and get your snacks and sit down and let's get started. So why I talk about this video, I'm also gonna be eating some food because I'm really hungry. So I picked up some canes and I'm gonna start from the very beginning of the story, which I have a video of, I had a knee surgery, um, a Valentine's Day in 2019 and it was a meniscus transplant so i have a cadaver's meniscus in my right knee if you guys don't know what a cadaver is it is basically a, a person who is deceased their own meniscus inside my knee and that's where this journey basically starts i got the transplant because my knee was bone my meniscus was bone on bone and I couldn't take it no more, so I thought it'd be a really good idea to get this surgery because I don't qualify for any transplant because I'm too young. So I got this surgery, and shortly after the surgery, I began to grow a mole that was the size of a freckle on my right knee. I didn't really think anything of it, and then it began to grow. And I didn't think it was cancer or anything like melanoma because it was close to my scar so I thought maybe it was a keloid because of my surgery. Well as time went on my knee um, every time I would hit the spot that um, the mole it would hurt really bad so I'm like I should probably get this checked out and it kept growing at a rapid pace. Well I had a biopsy done and the biopsy took three months for the results and they decided to say let you know what let's just treat it as this as if it is cancer and we're going to go ahead and just do the surgery anyway remove it and then take a lymph node just in case it is cancer well the day before surgery i got the biopsy result and they said it was cancerous so what they did was they cut off the mole which i'll insert pictures down below too and um they cut the mole and they took a lymph node as well. They did a biopsy of the lymph node and shortly after that the biopsy came positive for cancer in the lymph nodes. And based off this, this is how they stage it. The type of cancer I had was because since it was in the lymph nodes, that is stage three cancer. Luckily, it wasn't in my organs, which would have made it stage four. So that's why I have stage three melanoma. If I would have went in sooner, it probably wouldn't have spread this far. But I went through Banner, they did the surgery, and I will never, ever affiliate with Banner whatsoever. Shortly after my surgery, I got an infection in my incision and got really bad cellulitis and was hospitalized for about three days and it was the worst experience of my life i will never go back there not recommending you guys go there or whatever that's your choice but me personally i won't go back there and i ended up going home and then i had to recover there i had they had to recut reopen my incision because it was so full of pus it had to all be drained out because it was the infection was so bad on my leg and then now I am at Arizona Oncology which I love Arizona Oncology they have helped me a lot and I began treatment I've done treatment for a couple months now I've had my first scans and the treatment is working that they said that the tumors are shrinking which is a sign the treatment is working which is good I hope to continue this and I recently, when I first was diagnosed with cancer, I changed my diet. I began to cut down my sugars, take sugar free, and even become vegan. As I've um, been diagnosed for a while with cancer, I went back to my normal diet. I have chicken, not as much, but um, just a couple times a month or a week. And I just try to include more fruits and veggies in my diet so that I can still eat the things I like but include healthier meals in my diet as well. And 
Let me see, what else am I forgetting? Hmm. Other questions. Hmm. But they don't necessarily know if um, my surgery is what gave me the cancer. They can't say. But basically what happened was the joint itself doesn't have the cancer, but the way my body accepted the joint is what caused me to grow the mole, which created a cancerous mole, if that makes sense. So it's not the joint itself, but if you do have surgeries like this, you should really think about it because I would have never guessed in a million years getting a joint um, transplant that I would get cancer. I would. I understand like with major organs, yes, but with just a meniscus transplant, it didn't even cross my mind or wasn't even emphasized by the doctor or nothing. But I am now, um, I'm doing better. I do have it removed and I'm, I'm still fighting this journey and I know I will, I will be fine and everything's gonna be okay. And um, I also have RA which for those of you who don't know which is rheumatoid arthritis and I have really bad joint pain because of it and when I first started this treatment it was really hard for me for a couple months like two to three months I couldn't even get in the bath by myself it was so hard to walk I would literally just sit on the couch and um, I couldn't sleep I had to take sleeping pills because the pain was so bad I would wake up in the middle of the night and but it did get better. I learned to avoid, there's certain foods that you could avoid um, that increase your inflammation rate. And so I avoided some of those. And over time, it did, it did get a lot better. Like I do feel a lot better, but at first it's just really hard. But I do encourage you to push through it. it everything's gonna be tough at first, but it will get better. And that's basically where I'm at now, which is I push through and waiting for things to get better and I know it will get better. And I hope this video will help you, you or anyone you know with my journey experiences. Maybe it will help yours. And I almost forgot to mention, um, for my RA, I was taking methotrexate which is an immunosuppressant drug and I was taking it this whole time I had the mole not thinking anything of it and later on as I went to the doctor like when the when I was already just barely about to have the surgery he told me to get off that medicine right away because medicines like that um, were making my mole grow at an even rapid pace so meanwhile when I first go to the dermatologist I went to two dermatologists I went to Pima Dermatology, which he didn't even think my mom was cancer and had no idea what it was and didn't um, take no health history or anything uh, or medical history. Um, so he didn't, he didn't tell me it, like taking methotrexate which is going to make it worse. So meanwhile, months go by and months go by and I'm still taking methotrexate. I get, I go to another doctor and they tell me I need to get off that right away. But both my RA doctor and the um, dermatologist didn't tell me anything. So I keep taking it and then as I get to the cancer doctor, the colleges, he tells me I need to be off that right away. So I get off all my meds. So I'm on no meds for rheumatoid arthritis while I'm taking this treatment because I can't. So that's why when I first started this treatment, it is really rough for the first two to three months because my whole body was in pain really bad because I need that medicine and I'm starting to wing off the medicine. Well, <coughs> luckily it has gotten a lot better because it was really horrible in the beginning. But I, I don't know what changed, if it was my diet that changed or what, but I feel completely better now. I can walk. I can lift um, things up that weigh a couple pounds that are heavier and it's it's been a lot better for me thank God but it has been a huge journey it really has I I remember the day that I was hospitalized for my surgery that was probably the most scariest time of my life honestly I would ask people questions like the nurses questions what is this for why do I need this or what 
nobody had a clue over there. And I, when I was admitted, they had to move me to a different unit. And when they moved me there, uh, they put me on vancomycin. And vancomycin is a really strong drug. This was my first time ever having vancomycin. And I was a little nervous. And she gave me the vancomycin and within like a couple seconds, I broke out in this rush all over my body that burned really bad. And it was itching so bad. Um, I called the, I put my call light on and I said, can you get the nurse in here? I told the tech, um, I really need the nurse. Like my body's really burning and it itches really bad because I couldn't stop itching. It was hurting me because I kept scratching. And she's like, yes, I'll get your nurse. No nurse comes. I'm sitting there, wait a little bit longer, call again, tell her about the rash. She's like, I already told the nurse. So I just decided I, I gotta go to bed. I can't handle this pain anymore. I need to just go to bed. So I go to bed and then I wake up in the middle of the night and I hear my IV beeping. It's done. The whole IV's done. And then the nurse finally decides to come in and she walks in and I said, um, did the tech tell you I was breaking out in a rash? It was burning really bad. And she's like, she said no, which I have a hard time believing. And she never came in, and and it was horrible. And then she, I told her next time just to give me some medication before she infuses the drug, because she wasn't even going to do that. She was just going to give me the medicine again. She didn't even see the rash, didn't observe nothing, and basically just left me there and didn't come back. Knowing this was my first time receiving this drug, she should have came back within 10 to 15 minutes to see if I was okay and didn't. So that this is why I never, ever will go back to Banner because of that, because of nurses like that. But that could nurses like that could be anywhere. You never know. But that was my first time at Banner and my last time. I will never go back. Had a bad experience, and I went home finally. And then as I as I was going home the next day, my incision, the rest of it, because they only opened up a little bit, and, but that was on my lymph node, the one they opened up. And um, the one on my knee started splitting open and I started freaking out, but I guess it was a normal side effect of the drug. So they said not to worry about it and it did heal later on, but this, this overall experience has been crazy and a huge learning experience for me. And Especially for cancer patients, a lot of um, people sadly um, will take advantage of the cancer patients. Most doctors don't sit down with the patient, explain in a normal language what is going on and what you need to do. They just basically say, here, this is what you do, and you figure out what to do from there. Not really elaborating, and it is very confusing, and they charge you just for this and that and this and that. And if you're not paying attention, they can overcharge you. I've been overcharged a couple times. I've had to, it's so many charges. Like, you have to keep up with it's really hard. I recommend you have someone help you. It's a lot of work to keep up with all the, all your appointments and to make sure you're getting charged the right amount. But um, you will get through it. <clears throat> I know I will get through it. I'm trying to just stay positive. I don't, honestly, like, it just barely hit me. My first scan that I do have cancer, I didn't believe it at first because... Um, I just I didn't believe it like it just seems unreal and then I saw my scans and he's like the tumors are shrinking and I'm like oh crap like I really have cancer like if they're if the tumors are shrinking those are real tumors I have cancer like what so it barely just hit me like probably three months ago and I've had I've been diagnosed um, since October of 2020 is when I first got diagnosed so I'm just going to continue my journey and hope for the best and I hope um, any of you out there who have cancer or any type of cancer, good luck to you and I hope you have a, a better journey than most and hopefully you can avoid the hot mess of the health industry or try to at least but I wish you all luck. I hope you guys liked today's video and me sharing. If you have any more questions you can always message me or comment down below and I will tell you what has helped me or some advice that you would want to hear from me. And thanks for watching and if you're new don't forget to hit that subscribe button 
and I will be back with more videos and if you like these kind of sit down chit chat with me let me know in the comments and I will tell you more of my stories if you want to hear them alrighty thank you bye bye